Hello everyone, Steven here with another fragrance review. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel and watching my videos. It really does mean a lot to me. This time we have a fragrance from the Niche House of Le Labo. This is their Dubai City exclusive. I believe it's been in the works now for about a year and a half to two years and it was just released in 2013. This one goes by the name of Queer 28. Now released in 2013, the perfumer for this fragrance is Natalie Lorson. Natalie Lorson has actually done a couple other fragrances from the House of Le Labo, uh, one of them being Another 13, which is the Colette City exclusive, uh, made in conjunction with another magazine, and the other one being Poivre 23, which is the London City exclusive. She's also done Ancre Noir from the House of Lalique, as well as Mandarina Ducks Pure Black. So this is her most recent composition, Quida 28, and this is of course their leather-based fragrance. Now before I get into that, I know I mentioned the phrase uh, city exclusive a few times already in this review. What that means is that Le Labo as a company has, uh, it's an international brand and they have boutiques all over the world. So for every boutique that they have, they make a fragrance that is only available at that boutique. So then the only means of acquiring that fragrance would be to actually visit that physical location and purchase it yourself, unless of course you're fortunate enough to know somebody who lives in that city and they can buy it and mail it out to you. Now generally as a company, Le Labo does not accept phone orders or online orders and this is their Dubai City exclusive of course located in the United Arab Emirates so you would actually have to fly out there in order to uh, buy this fragrance. Now Lillabo as a company also does have a city exclusive event which happens every two years. So uh, for a six week period this year in 2013 being from September 1st up until October 15th they make all of their city exclusive fragrances available all around the world so you can buy them at any uh, Le Labo boutique across the world and that's how I managed to get my hands on a 50 ml bottle of Quid 28 uh, retailing for $295. Now of course the name Quid 28 it's uh, French it translates to leather 28 so this is of course a leather based fragrance and I think it's the only other fragrance from the house of Le Labo that features a prominent leather note uh, with the other one of course being Santal 33. Now, the name of this fragrance, 28, indicates that there are 28 ingredients in this fragrance. Leather, of course, only being one of those uh, ingredients. Now, generally with Le Labo fragrances, the name of the fragrance does not necessarily indicate what the fragrance is going to smell like. Um, that is, of course, going to be the most concentrated note in the fragrance. However, in many cases, I found that it really is just a note that serves in the background, and it's not necessarily the forefront of the fragrance. I'll let you know if that's the case with this fragrance, and I'll let you know if I think this fragrance is worth the city exclusive price. Next up, let's take a look at, at the presentation for Queer 28. Queer 28 by Lila Bo is available in a variety of bottle sizes. It comes in 15 milliliters, 50 milliliters, 100 ml, and 500 milliliters as well. Uh, this fragrance is available in eau de parfum concentration, or you can actually buy it in a perfume oil as well. First up, we have the box, and all Lila Bo boxes look the same depending on what size you get them in. Over here, you have the name of the company, their logo, you have the name of the fragrance up here on the top of this sticker here, where it was compounded, on which date, and for who. Now, Lila Lillabo fragrances actually used to have a um, expiration date on their stickers. They've done away with that and some more information down here at the bottom. Um, pretty simple presentation. Of course, it's consistent with this laboratory theme that they have going on. I think it's kind of cool. Some people find it to be tacky. Over here on the inside, there's some more paperwork. Pretty much thanking you on your purchase, giving you some more information about the company, uh, so on and so forth. And over here on this black paper is where the bottle would rest uh, when you open it up for the first time. Pretty nice presentation, I thing. Now as far as the bottle goes, this is supposed to be, you know, a bottle that you would find sitting on the shelf in a laboratory. So of course, consistent with that theme, this is their Dubai City exclusive. So it says Dubai on the left hand side of the bottle and the name Queer 28, which of course translates to leather. And of course, same information that you saw on the box, you're also going to get on the bottle, a uh, 12 month expiration date and a pretty heavy stopper with the name of the company engraved in there. This is actually quite heavy. The atomizer gives you a good distribution. Um, it's not the best in the game, but it certainly gets the job done. And that has been the presentation for Queer 28 by Le Labo. Now, as far as the smell for this fragrance goes, Queer 28 opens up with this alcoholic punch. Now, I know that's, of course, very typical of fragrances with the perfumer's alcohol and whatnot, but to me, this smells quite different. It smells not quite like perfumer's alcohol, but it has this almost spicy and dry quality that is, at least to me, reminiscent of like a finely aged or a very well-spiced 
whiskey. It has this whiskey-like opening that's very appealing, and in my humble opinion, it's probably the most appealing part of this fragrance's development. And unfortunately, it is short-lived. It only lasts about 10 to 15 seconds. Although that dry quality of the fragrance persists, it very quickly progresses into this vetiver leather combo. Now, the vetiver used in this fragrance, I must note, is of the dirtier variety. So if you're into fragrances like Mugler Cologne, um, Original Vetiver by Creed, or even Guerlain's Vetiver, which is a very professional, yet earthy, but clean smelling vetiver, you're going to get the polar opposite in this fragrance. So, of course, this is going to smell very dirty, very uh, earthy, very rooty. This reminds me a lot of Lorenzo Villoresi's vetiver. So if you're familiar with that, that's... Uh, along the same lines of what you're going to get with this fragrance. I know he also worked on a fragrance for Gucci uh, from their Privé line, if you will, called Forever Now, which also happens to be vetiver based. I have not yet smelled that fragrance, but I would imagine that since he's the perfumer, that the vetiver note would still smell the same. So it's a very dirty vetiver, and I think that in combination or in contrast with the leather note used in this fragrance really offers an intriguing smell uh, to this fragrance. Now, it's a very smooth leather being used in this fragrance. It's not aggressive, and to my surprise, it's not overly animalic. Now, this is an animalic fragrance in every sense of the word, um, especially as far as classification goes. You gotta think there's leather used uh, in this fragrance, there's musk used, probably more than one variety of musk, and also ambroxan, which is a synthetic aroma chemical counterpart to ambergris. But at no point in this fragrance's development does it smell fecal, does it smell like urine or anything that would come from an animal like castorium, civet. It does not smell overly animalic, but it actually smells like a very smooth, not very aggressive, but a very well-preserved leather. So the mental image that this fragrance paints for me, if I can use an analogy, is imagine a very well-worn in, but very well-preserved old pair of leather moccasins. Now take those moccasins, dip them in whiskey, and hang them up to dry in a clothesline in the middle of an arid desert. That's what this fragrance reminds me of. So as far as location goes, I think this is a very appropriate city exclusive for their Dubai boutique. Um, but I don't think that this is a very wearable fragrance. Even in the dry down when the vanilla absolute note comes out, um, I don't think it ever pushes into gourmand territory. There's always this faint sweetness in the background, but that leather note is unrelenting. Now it's very smooth, which I think does increase the wearability by a bit, especially considering that it's not very animalic, but still a combination of leather and dirty vetiver just doesn't you know, sound like a fragrance that I would wear every day. So casually, Yes, um, in the comfort of your own home, definitely. Just try to avoid a close counter scenarios with this fragrance. Now, it perhaps gets a little bit musky in the dry down, but not overly, still not to the point where I would consider this fragrance you know, essentially animalic or anything like that. Now, overall, I think this is a very intriguing fragrance. I don't think it's necessarily going to live up to the standards of, say, a Poivre 23 or Bay Rose 26 or one of these other uh, Le Labo fragrances that have been widely talked about in the past couple of years. Um, but I think it is an intriguing fragrance, and being that it is a city exclusive and the availability or lack thereof, I think it is going to get a little bit of hype. Um, I just don't necessarily think that it lives up to the standards of Poivre 23. I think that that's, you know, a city exclusive fragrance actually worth the price. This one, on the other hand, if you're a collector, yes. Uh, for practical wearability, if you want to save your money, can easily um, avoid purchasing this fragrance. But it is a nice fragrance, very intriguing. I think it's, um, for collectors, it's worth the money. Now, as far as compliments or complaints go, I think this fragrance would be much more like the uh, to land you a complaint, unfortunately. Um, it's not a very easygoing fragrance, it's not citrusy, it's not fresh, it's not clean, it's not something that, you know, you can wear on a daily basis. This is really, you know, a fragrance to be worn if you're in the mood for it. This is um, really more for collectors, this is more for, you know, somebody who wants something strange, something intriguing. Not overly strange, of course, but definitely not conventional, not something that you would expect in an everyday easygoing fragrance. I mean the combination of the dirty vetiver with that old moccasin like smelling leather note I don't think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. I can see one or two out of ten people actually liking this fragrance. Um, so I do have a tendency of wearing this fragrance casually um, in the comfort of my own home of course um, but definitely not in a close encounter type of a scenario. I will be wearing this fragrance outside of testing because like I said, I do like the smell. I think it's a very intriguing smell. 
I just don't think it's going to live up to the standards of, say, like a Poif 23 or a Bay Rose 26 or one of these other city exclusive fragrances uh, that have been getting a lot of hype in the past few years. But as far as the smell goes, I think it's a great smelling fragrance. I think for a collector, it's definitely something worth getting your hands on. And it's wearable to an extent because it's not too animalic or too smoky, but it is incense -y. So I do want to make that uh, mention. So that's it as far as the small goes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Last up, we have the rating. Thanks again. First up, we have uniqueness and overall smell and Queer 28 earned from me a 7 out of 10. I think that this is an intriguing smell. I can see a lot of people liking it in the community, uh, but as far as like a mass marketed fragrance would go, this does not have the potential for that. I think this is more of like a collector's item. Um, and as far as the mental image that this paints, I think it's a pretty cool one. Um, but it's very well blended, I think. I think the, uh, you know, the vanilla never really comes out in this fragrance, which is totally okay because it's not necessarily classified as a gourmand, more of like an oriental with an emphasis on the leather note. I think the ingredients are well blended with each other and there is quite an interesting progression on your skin, uh, minus that whiskey opening being so short-lived. But I don't see this appealing to a wide variety of people. It's not very easy going. And as far as the smell goes, I ended up giving it a 7 out of 10. Uh, next up we have longevity and I ended up giving this fragrance a 7 out of 10 as well. Um, this is an eau de parfum concentration so 6 to 8 hours is expected. I generally do get about 7 hours from this fragrance so I think that a 7 is appropriate. And as far as projection goes I ended up giving it a 6 out of 10. Now considering the compositional nature of this fragrance you know think vetiver, think leather, you know all these very pronounced and strong ingredients I was expecting it to be a projection beast um, but it does sit a little bit closer to the skin uh, much more so than I had expected or anticipated but you know what for a fragrance of this compositional nature I'm actually quite glad that it doesn't project a mile away um, I don't think it ever radiates beyond an arm's length so I ended up giving it a seven uh, six out of ten but I think the projection is pretty good and acceptable for this fragrance uh, next up we have versatility I ended up giving this fragrance a five out of ten um, of course, all the Labo fragrances are marketed as unisex fragrance. Uh, I don't see this one being necessarily unisex or androgynous. I can certainly see a guy with like a 5 o'clock shadow, perhaps riding a dirt bike with a leather jacket in the middle of the desert wearing this fragrance. Um, but that's kind of the image that I get, you know. Um, I think this is a little bit more geared, you know, toward the masculine audience. Um, definitely for colder weather wear, I think this one would work very well in the fall and the winter. And uh, as far as social scenarios go, perhaps you can get away with it semi-formally. Um, but this is really more of a casual fragrance and one to be worn in the comfort of your own home. And as far as presentation goes, I know Le Labo presentation is like a love it or hate it thing. But I do really like the personalization and I like the customer service. And uh, so far I have not had any complaints with the brand. So I already let you know what I felt about that. I ended up giving it a 9 out of 10. And then that would bring this fragrance to an overall rating or an average score of 6.8 out of 10. So guys, thank you so much for watching my review. That was my review of Queer 28 by Le Labo. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to let me know. Shoot me a message. Leave a comment down below. Have you smelled this fragrance? If you have, please let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Also, if you would like to join my Facebook group, please feel free to do so. I've left the link for that in the description section below. Again, this has been Steven with another fragrance review. Thanks for watching.